Bong. Holy crap. Hey guys, our topic this week is a viewer request from all of these lovely people. We're going to be going over Lilith from the Darksiders franchise. We'll go over her story and what little is known of her abilities. So first off, Lilith is a demon. Some might even call her the Queen of Demons, as she is A, the most powerful and only major female demon to whom we have been introduced, and B, known in some circles as the Bride of the Dark Prince himself. Though we will call their relationship open, or at the very least, very, very broken. She is most famously known as the Mother of Monsters, however as she was, among other things, specifically the creator of the very first Nephilim, Absalom, and thus the creator or mother, quote-unquote, of the Nephilim as a species, including the horsemen Death, War, Fury, and Strife. She is incredibly intelligent, dangerously devious, and like most demons from most mythos, always striving for greater power, though unlike many of her peers, she seems to know her limits, and is accustomed to biding her time and planning carefully. She appears to be, for all intents and purposes, Darksiders equivalent to a powerful succubus, using her wits and wiles as her primary tools and weapons, while resorting to violence and destruction only when necessary. Though indications are that she can throw down with the best of them, because even and perhaps especially among demons, you can only climb so high up the ladder without actual power to back up your plans. We're going to go over Lilith's appearance in the Darksiders story chronologically, so for our purposes, she first comes onto our radar many, many thousands of years ago, before the books, games, or comics take place. Old, powerful, and well-known even then, Lilith used her demonically feminine wiles to charm a maker by the name of Golbanon. While enthralled with her... ...ness, she wants the dick! Gulbanon taught Lilith the secrets of creating life, and while it can be assumed that she created other creatures in the learning process, it was during this time that she created her living masterpieces. Mixing the essences of angel and demon, Lilith created the Nephilim, race of the four horsemen, and arguably one of the greatest scourges ever set loose upon creation. Two very interesting things happened before and after that, though, not counting the Nephilim's whole burning crusade of carnage and conquest. First, before she created Absalom, Gulbanon sort of awoke to the realization of just what sort of horrible events could unfold now that Lilith had the knowledge and power to create life at her whim. As such, he made plans to inform his fellow makers of his oversight and the power Lilith now wielded. However, before he could do so, Gulbanon was slain. And not by Lilith, nor by her command. Instead, Gulbanon fell at the hands of his own maker apprentice, Belisatra. As it turns out, while a fantastic craftsman, Gulbanon was a terrible judge of character, as he not only took a career manipulator and demon as a lover, but apprenticed a genuine mad scientist and psychopath at the same time. Belisatra was an intellectual, but the scary kind, the kind that runs the shadiest of covert, non-existent quote-unquote research bases for unscrupulous governments like those seen in every science-based horror film. Belisatra was described by Lilith herself as having a complete lack of conscience. Yes, the demon said she felt nothing. She would study anything and everything just to know how it worked. Consequences and collateral damage be damned. And she really wanted to see what someone like Lilith would do with all of the knowledge of a maker. So she killed Gulbanon in order to let Lilith do her thing so that Belisatra could watch and take notes. Sometime after the Nephilim's creation, the Chard Council stepped in and actually removed the knowledge of making from Lilith's mind, or at least most of it. It is hinted in a conversation she and Death share later in the Abomination Vault that she still has the ability to create some form of life, but obviously not nearly as well or easily or something. Whatever powers of making she does have are severely limited. On the subject of Death in the Abomination Vault, that is where and when Lilith is next encountered. During the events of the book, War and Death are sent to do some detective work by the Council, as it has been determined that someone is in pursuit of the titular Abomination Vault. Without going into too many spoilers, it is discovered that Belisatra, the mad scientist maker, is involved with the plot to secure the Abomination Vault. 
Finding that Belisatra had been in Lilith's service ever since Gulbana's death, War and Death head to Lilith's stronghold to question her on the matter. Which is when we discover that Lilith is absolutely the most disgusting creature in all of Darksiders. Though the Seven Deadly Sins are going to be personified when Darksiders 3 comes out, so who knows, one of them might beat her out. Yay. For the first and only time, we see Lilith in her own stronghold, her private, personal space nestled in the expanse of hell itself. It is a massive palace of flesh. In the literal sense, mind you, not the metaphorical one that you might expect considering her succubus parallels. The descriptions in the book couldn't help but remind us of a more distasteful and bile-inducing Zerg structure interior, all winding corridors of flesh pulsing with life, slanted and sloped as if the horsemen were actually traveling through some massive living creature, which for all we know they were, with doors of flesh and sinew that had to be pulled open to pass through. And I love the Zerg, so it sounded awesome. It is also well here that we are given a firm confirmation that her seductive powers are indeed powers, not simply a skill at allure and a gift for manipulation via honeyed words and breathy whispers. As before meeting her, Death literally forces War to wait outside while he questions Lilith, because the Elder Horseman is genuinely worried about what the Mother of Monsters could do with one of the horsemen in her thrall. Once in her presence, we the readers are treated to more gross visuals as horsemen and demoness threaten and bait each other back and forth, revealing that Belisatra was no longer in Lilith's employ, that Lilith was not in league with the book's antagonist despite having been petitioned to join the cause, an offer she had refused partially to avoid just the kind of horseman encounter she was dealing with now. Death needled that Lilith was the kind to want to regain the power of knowledge stripped from her by the Council ages before, but Lilith replied with all-seeming sincerity that the price of that knowledge would be the wrath of most of the major powers of the cosmos, and as such was not worth pursuit. She then told Death everything about Belisatra she thought would be useful, and gave him an idea where to look for the Wayward Maker, as well as dropping the name of the book's primary antagonist information of great importance to death and war's investigation. This conversation is also one of the greatest hints to the level of power that Lilith is capable of bringing to bear. While there are a number of moments throughout the encounter where death garners genuine fear and trepidation from her, most notably by threatening to make her an official enemy of the Council itself, Lilith very seriously informs death before he departs that he has used the only play of that particular card available to him, telling him, in effect, that should such a threat be leveled again, she'd take it as a declaration of war. And in that war, though she was certain it would end in her death, she would ensure the complete destruction of the horsemen and the near total devastation of the council and its resources. While this could very easily be taken as bluster, much like Samael's repeated comments that it would take all of the horsemen to have a chance to slay him, again, much like Samael, there are numerous side indications indicating that Lilith thinks she can at least come close to backing up her claims. For our money, the fact that she admits in a conflict with the Council her death is almost certain causes the rest of her threat to ring with truth. Although it is also true, any good liar knows this, the very best lies are sprinkled with a bit of truth. And Lilith, creature of guile that she is, is a master of lies. Lilith is next encountered in one of the Darksiders comics. Her appearance there, like most of the comics, is short. When the horsemen are sent to make the rounds and remind Heaven and Hell that the truce is to remain standing, she is trying to make some sort of deal with Samael when the horsemen arrive at his doorstep. It is also she that counsels the horseman to speak with Abaddon, the angel, about keeping the peace, as his warmongering is well known, at least to her. Which is interesting because, after her appearance in the comics, she has a very brief but important appearance in Darksiders 1, before playing a larger role in Darksiders 2 that we'll get to in a moment. We never actually see her in Darksiders 1, we only hear her voice. Master of manipulation that she is, perhaps even working in concert with Samael or other demon lords, Lilith gained knowledge of Abaddon's plot to destroy the seals and ambush the demon leaders on Earth when they responded to the call. His plan was to then reforge all the seals, erasing the evidence of the crime, and blame any of the political and military fallout on the demons as being the obvious culprits. As any good tactician does in this sort of circumstance, 
Lilith ensured that a trap was laid within Abaddon's own trap, shattering his forces, the Hellguard, and defeating Abaddon in the process. Broken and with his soldiers falling in droves around him, Lilith appeared and gave Abaddon a choice. Rule in Hell or serve in Heaven. Basically, join the demons, act as a general for the forces of Hell, or keep his name and what was left of his honor, and face judgment at the hands of both Heaven and the Charred Council. Abaddon ultimately chose to serve Hell, becoming the destroyer and adding yet another trophy to Lilith's collection. She is next, and so far last, encountered during the events of Darksiders 2. During War's 100 years imprisonment, Death sets out to erase the crimes of which he knows War to be falsely accused. During his quest, he arrives in Samael's domain, seeking the Demon Lord himself so that he may acquire the Demon Key, an artifact of vital importance to Death's quest. Instead, he finds the whole area in disrepair and Samael nowhere to be seen. As he is presumably locked up by this point, see our Darksiders 1 playthrough or Samael lore video for more information on that subject. For reasons that can be guessed at but not confirmed, Lilith seems to have taken over Samael's domain in his absence. He has better taste, if nothing else. As such, Death encounters her while searching for Samael, and, not unlike what happened during the Abomination Vault, the two have a moderately civil discussion before Lilith helps send Death back in time to meet Samael. She agrees to do this because she knows exactly what Death is doing there, and she sees within his quest a possibility too good to pass up. In exchange for helping Death to meet Samael, Lilith asks that Death, instead of resurrecting humanity, his current plan, resurrect his fallen brothers and sisters, the Nephilim. Claiming maternal sorrow at the loss of nearly the entire species of her best crafted children. Death doesn't even vaguely hint that he will acquiesce to her wishes, but despite this, Lilith seemed confident that he would come through for her and resurrect the Nephilim. So confident, in fact, that at some point after, or possibly even before, her meeting with Death, Lilith promised the Black Prince an army of Nephilim to aid him in the coming conflict. And when, spoilers, Death ultimately chooses to save war and resurrect humanity, she is forced to come before her lord and master and admit her failure, for which she is brutally punished, presumably at the Black Prince's own hands. The last we, the audience, ever hear from her are her anguished screams. And that's basically Lilith, mother of monsters, demon queen of the Darksiders universe. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave us a like. And if you have ideas for topics you'd like to see us do in the future, do like all of these wonderful people and let us know in the comments down below. If you want to see more videos from us in the future, be they lore or let's play, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. In the meantime, this has been Two, Two Men and Mike, Mike signing, signing off. off. Hey guys, you can click the link in the left for our last lore video. You can click the link on the right for our last Let's Play. And right here in the middle, that orb, you can hit that to, to subscribe. subscribe. Also, ring the bell if you want to be notified when we post a new video. This, this is, is Two Men and a Mic. Thanks, Thanks for watching. watching.